99% of the time, support for a guy who's serving time or a woman is going to come in the form of money. Phone calls, stamps, hell, even electric stamps now. You know, now these facilities are changing more towards email. And anytime you write an email to a prisoner, you got to attach a stamp with that. And that could be upwards of a dollar, 50 cents to a dollar. It can get expensive. Commissary, visits, gas, so you can go visit him. Maybe hotel expenses if he's that far away. It's not an easy thing trying to hold a guy down while he's serving time. And it can definitely get expensive. And it can also get stressful as well. You know, you ain't got no idea what this guy's going through while locked up except for what he's calling home and telling you about. Sometimes he might call and he's in the worst of moods. Maybe he done got in a fight. Well, if he got in a fight, he's probably not calling because he's probably in the hole. There might be times where you don't hear from this guy for weeks on end, maybe even months because they're dealing with some sort of a lockdown or maybe he's locked down. And the overall stress from a situation like this is definitely going to take its toll. So the one thing that I want to say as I try to move through this is, you know, having a relationship with a prisoner, it's going to be a tough thing, especially if they have to serve a lot of time. It's going to be stressful and it's going to be expensive. And I want to throw this in here as well. And I wouldn't be right if I didn't do this. I'm just going to keep it 100. You know, a lot of guys, they find these relationships. They're looking for relationships or they say that they're looking for relationships, but it's not really love that they're looking for. They're looking for money. They're looking for financial support. And I'm not saying every single prisoner is like this. I'm not trying to cast a black eye or some sort of dark cloud over guys who are serving time who've got ads on these pen pal websites or on Facebook Live because they got them a contraband cell phone. I mean, however it might go. But in more times than that, and believe me when I tell you because I dealt with it personally myself, I mean, I was legitimately a pen pal kingpin getting guys pen pals through the pen pal that I had. So I've got quite a bit of experience with this and I'm trying to tell you in more times than not, uh, guys, they just looking for support while they're locked up. And when they get home, you ain't got no idea what's going to happen. You know, I'd like to say that when they come home, you guys are going to get married. You're going to carry on a long relationship. But the fact of the matter is... You know, if you meet somebody while they're serving time and you don't know the damnedest thing about them out here in the free world, you've got no idea what that person is like when free. Because believe me, a person is going to be a whole world different from serving time to out here in the free world. I want to talk about starting relationships in prison. Now... I might lose my gentleman's card behind this, you know what I mean? Because I know a lot of the homies is going to be mad at me for saying what I'm about to say. But I got to keep it all the way 100, you know what I mean? I got to keep it real. So I'm going to say to the ladies out there and, and even to the fellas out there too, if you're thinking about starting a relationship with somebody in prison, I'm going to say be careful. I'm never going to say don't do it, but I'm definitely going to say be careful when you start a relationship with these jail niggas. Definitely be careful. And this is coming from a jail dude, you know what I mean? I would never say don't do it because I was there, you know what I mean? So I know both sides of the coin. I know there's probably some good dudes in jail. But you got to remember that prison, the people that's in prison are not there for being quiet boys or good people. A lot of the people that's in prison are there because they did some bad stuff. So with that being said, you take this person this, that, that has a criminal mastermind and you put him in a cage and you give him nothing but time. He comes up with, you'd be surprised with what these guys come up with. It's geniuses in jail. But these dudes can be, it's some of the best con artists in jail. So, I just would say like, especially like, unless, I'm not saying it like, if you knew the person before he went to prison and... You decide to start a relationship with him while he was in prison for whatever reason, then that's dope. I respect you. I respect your strength you have for being able to, to go through that with that brother or sister. But 
I'm saying if you just meet a person in prison and you don't know them, you don't know this person. You don't know what their agenda is. So you have to, you can't go in blind. You have to have your spidey senses have to be on 10. Because the sad part is you got a lot of people out here that I don't know if they just looking for love in the wrong places, but they just looking for somebody to treat them right. And then on the flip side of that, you got a lot of dudes in jail that's just looking for somebody to hold them down. And I've seen it many a times, you know. I got countless stories. I know a dude, I was in MacDougal, level four security, maximum security prison. There was this dude in there, big dude. I'm not going to say his name because... He's a friend of mine and he might feel some type of way. And he might even see this and know I'm talking about him. But big dude, man, found him an older chick. Met her in prison. I'm trying to remember exactly how he met her. I don't know if it was through a pen pal site. But he met her in prison. Older white lady. Lady took care of him. I don't know what he was telling this lady. I used to tell him, like, yo, bro, you must have all the game. Because she kept his books. She kept thousands of dollars on his man's books. He had every new pair of sneakers that comments every soul. He had every Game Boy, every CD. She made sure he it was nothing that was sold on that commissary slip that that man didn't have. He even went, she even went far as, so far as to put in this man's name on her house. And this dude was doing, how much time was he doing? I think he was down, he was doing 11, I think he was down 11. But he was about to come home. He got, had a couple years left. She rolled the years out with him. Put his name on her house. Had a whole house remodeled so that he can have a man cave in the house. And this is the thing. When we in prison, we go, we say you strip down to the raw you. You don't have your clothes, your jewelry. You don't have the drugs, the alcohol. You don't have nothing. You so sensitive. You say your emotions is, is, is all you got. Your feelings, your emotions, you, the real you is all you got. So a lot of times you might meet this dude and he gives you the real him. And you might be like, this is a lovely dude. You know what I mean? Because he's saying all the right things. He's coming straight from the heart with it. He probably had all day to sit in his cell and just think about you. And as soon as he got that 15 minute phone call, he trying to pour all his thoughts about what he thought about you into this 15 minutes. And while we there, while he's in prison, because I'm a victim also, I'm, I, I am, I can say I, I've, I've done this also. I, I can't call myself a victim, but you know the word I'm looking for. But while we're in prison, we saying all the right things and we really feel that at that moment, you know? Because like I said, we've been stripped from everything that we used to having that puts us on the level that we're used to being on. So now we're down here. We have nothing. We have none of that. We have no alcohol, no drugs, no big chains, no clothes, no nice clothes, no nothing. All you get is me. And if that's all I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you all of me. Every 15 minute phone call. But here's the kicker. A lot of times when we come home and we get back to all that stuff, the drinking and the drugging and a lot of the stuff that these kids is out here doing, you're not going to get the real him anymore. Sadly, a lot of us only give the real us when we're in prison. It's crazy, but it's true. So now when this lady don't took care of this dude, back to my story. This lady don't took care of this dude for however many years he had left. Changed her whole apartment. And like I said, when this was a friend of mine, so I used to kick it with him. So I used to be like, yo, homie, what you going to do with that when you get home? 
And a lot of times we got the best intentions. But it's because of the environment, you know. The light has been taken out of the situation. So all we got is the darkness. So all we all we have is our dreams. And then you give us everything back. Freedom is everything. When you take that from somebody. So then when you give us everything back. It's so easy to forget about those dreams you had when you was in the darkness. So back to my story. He told me, yeah, when I come home, man, I'm going to move in with her. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I had all the best thoughts in the world. I'm like, all right, that's dope. She deserve it. She a good woman. She held you down. Take excellent care of you. Come up here to see you. Bring your kids. Go to your baby mama's house. Pick up your kids and bring your kids up here to see, see you. She's, she's dope. Fast forward. Um... I spoke to the dude since I've been home now. I left I left this dude. My level dropped in June of 2018. I left the maximum and went to a medium security prison, level three. Haven't seen him since June 2018. That was what his plans was with, with his lady. I go to Carl Robinson. I makes parole. I come home, I'm in this halfway house. So I got homies calling me from jail. One of my homies called me. And he like, I was about to say the dude name. He like, oh, so-and-so um, be calling me. And I be calling so-and-so whatever. And he out there doing good, man, holla at him. So I'm like, oh, word. I'm like, all right, let me holla at him. I know he, he said he was going to come home and marry that chick. He ever marry her? So the homie like, nah, I don't know about all that. He ain't say nothing about all that. I just know he out there, he doing him. So I call, I call the dude. Dude like, yo. I'm like, yo, what up with shorty? Like after we got our pleasantries out of the way or whatever. I'm like, so what up with shorty? He's like, what's shorty? He ain't even know who I was talking about. That's the crazy. Yo, I said, what up with shorty? Like, what's shorty? The Spanish one? I'm like, no. The white one that was holding you down. In 2018, throughout the, the, the whole India bid. Like, oh, yeah, I had to double. <laughs> I'm like, ironically, you chose to double. You ain't double until you got home, though. You ain't double when you was in jail and she was doing anything she, that you needed her to do for you. And that's exactly what I'm telling you to be careful for. Now, I know this dude. He told me he was going to come home and marry her. And that was his genuine feelings. At that time, you put anybody in the cage, they going to say probably you, you put, you put them in a cage long enough and you stripped them from everything except the bare necessities. And you probably hear a lot of, they'll say a lot of things, you know, but you have to be careful, you know, because whoever this woman is, she's somewhere with her heart broken. She only invested thousands and thousands of dollars in, into this guy. For him to come home and talk about who, the Puerto Rican one? <laughs> so you have to be careful because, for one, you got to remember these dudes and these these women probably had lives before they went to jail. So let's not think that you're the only person that they know. Like, they didn't, they weren't born in jail. 